Tigers and welcome to the TMN TV newscast for Monday, April 29th, 2019. Stay tuned for the latest news at Fort Hayes State University and around Northwest Kansas. I'm Lexi Gross and here shortly we will take a look at what's going on around the globe and in the sports world. But first, here's what's making news in Tigerland. Fort Hayes is hosting three performing arts events this weekend. In Palmer Hall, there will be two university chorus recitals. The Spectrum Composition Recital will be on Friday, April 30th, and the Honors Recital will be on Saturday, May 1st. Both events will begin at 1.30. For local chorus events, the Hayes Symphony Orchestra will perform on Sunday, May 4th in Beach Schmidt Performing Arts Center at 7.30. This year's show is entitled Grand Finale, Life, Death, Fate, and Farewell. The Hayes Symphony Orchestra is paired with Fort Hayes State, with Fort Hayes State. Many of the musicians are FHSU alumni, staff, and community members. The 2018 recital theme followed Russian masterworks, including classical masterworks, family and children concerts, theatrical performances, international soloists, and choirs. All three events are free to Fort Hayes students. Southwind, Southwind CrossFit and local businesses are hosting the annual Brews on the Bricks and 5K Run this Saturday. The event is 21 and up and is open to the public. The 5K run will begin at 9 to jumpstart a long day of food, drink, and fun. Tickets can be purchased online through visitforthays.com for $20 or the day of for $25. Check-in will be at 8.30 and all participants will receive a free t-shirt. To ensure participation, Southwind is encouraging the community to register online before Saturday morning. The Sternberg Museum will be hosting an event all week to showcase the Megalodon, the largest shark that ever lived. The exhibit will feature fossils and life-size models that, will part that participants will be able to walk through. There will also be many activities to test, to test knowledge and skill of surviving in the ocean. The events kicked off Sunday afternoon and will continue every day this week from 9 until 6. Admission prices will remain the same throughout the week and tickets can be purchased at the door. The Phillips County Health System hosted the Oz, the Oz Hospital Tour over the weekend. Characters from The Wizard of Oz accompanied local physicians as they traveled to elementary schools in Phillipsburg to teach children about hospitals and how they operate. The purpose behind the tour was to show children what happens within a hospital in order to prevent them from being scarred during future visits. According to Phillips County School District, the tour has been put on for 30 years and as the community feels as though it eases their children's fears of medical checkups. A Topeka prison dental instructor was recently charged with seven counts of unlawful sexual relations with female inmates and is now being transferred to a jail in Shawnee County, Oklahoma. Thomas Coe of Topeka was employed by the correctional facility starting in 2013 until December of 2018. When allegations were first made against him, Alleged incidents occurred between 2014 and 2018 with 16 separate women being accounted for as victims. He is currently awaiting his sentencing within Shawnee County Jail. A college party in Topeka, Kansas has shots fired on Saturday night resulting in tragedy amongst the Washburn University football team. Dwayne Simmons, a redshirt sophomore, was killed in the incident while teammate and NFL signee Corey Ballantyne was injured according to a press release from Washburn University President Jerry Farley. On the night of the shooting, responders were directed to Central Topeka, four blocks away from campus. It was there that officers found Simmons with fatal injuries while Valentine was sent to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The university president sent his condolences to both families and stated that it was particularly poignant to lose a student through such a senseless act. Kansas football faced more adversity as the Kansas State Wildcats senior defensive back Duke Shelley was arrested Tuesday morning for failure to, to appear in court. Shelley's warrant arrest was placed after having two unpaid traffic tickets, one for driving without proof of liability insurance and one for having expired tags according to the Riley County PD spokesperson Haley Rowland. Prior to Shelley's arrest, three Wildcats had been arrested on similar charges. All currently remain on the team. Athletic director of the K State of K State football co commented that the team was aware of the arrest and planned to handle the issue internally. A local university has been recognized for its efforts to reduce food waste on campus. 
Haskell Indi Indian Nations University earned the 2019 Regional Food Recovery Challenge Award in Lawrence, Kansas on Friday, April 26. EPA Region 7 Administrator Jim Gulford presented the award to Dr. Daniel Wildcat, a member of the university whose contributions to food conservation has earned them this honor. After decades of anti-abortion protests centered in Kansas, the state's the state's highest court ruled abortion a constitutional right to women residing within the state. In a 6-1 to decision, the court also kept in place an injunction on a law which bans second trimester abortions. The Kansas Supreme Court passed this law in 2015 and has faced seve severe adversity from its roots. As the United States Supreme Court continues to follow a more conservative path, advocates for personal aut autonomy are looking towards state con constitution for justice. Recently, Ohio signed a heartbeat bill that would prevent abortions from the first detection of the fetus's heartbeat. Doctors have stressed that this will only further lead to unsafe abortions down the road. The state will continue to hear testimonies for both sides throughout the remainder of the week in order to determine the overall effects this bill will, will constitute. When we return from this short break, we will be here with news from around the globe. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I guess I have really been looking for love in this dating app. Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. What? <laughs> sure Welcome back, Tigers. I'm Lexi Gross, and here's what's going on around the globe. A gunman opened fire in a synagogue on Saturday, killing one woman and wounding three people. The shooting at Shabad of Poe in California is the latest in a series of deadly attacks targeting places of worship. The gunman shot people as they gathered to celebrate the end of Passover, one of the holiest holidays on the Jewish calendar. This is the second deadly synagogue attacks in the United States in six months following the shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh in October. According to CNN News, the San Diego police said the shooter used an AR-type assault weapon. The suspect is in, the sh in the shooting is 19-year-old college student John Ernest. Ernest fled the scene and then reported his location to 911. He later surrendered to a canine officer without incident. Authorities are still investigating the motives behind his attack and reviewing the, so the shooter's social media posts. It is official the Sri Lanka government says the man responsible for the bombings is dead. As the country continues to recover from the attack, the government has confirmed the Ron Hashim died in the blast at the Shangri-La Hotel. According to Tribune News, it was one of six hotels and churches targeted in the attack that killed more than 250 people. Hashim was a radical Quran teacher and the leader of a local Islamist extremist group called National Tawhid Jamath. He appeared in a video released by Islamic State in which some of the claimed bombers pledged allegiance to the group. It was not clear whether Hashim has been in direct contact, in direct contact with IS. The former vice president is definitely running for president. Joe Biden announced his decision in a campaign video released Thursday. The video shows people marching in Charlottesville as well as civil rights footage and other historical events. He framed the 2020 race as a battle for the soul of this, taken, of this nation. The core values of this nation are standing in the world our very democracy. Everything that has made America, America is at stake. Today he held his first official event in Pittsburgh. Biden will then host a rally in Philadelphia in a few weeks to discuss his vision for the country. Iowa's longest serving Republican state lawmaker is ditching the party. State Representative Andy McKean has been serving since he was first elected in 1978. He announced his party switch at a news conference last Tuesday in a protest of what he called President Trump's unacceptable behavior. According to CNN News, McKean called Trump a poor example for the nation and particularly for our children. He'll seek re-election in 2020 as a Democrat. This, will, this move will narrow the party split in the Iowa House of Representatives to 53 Republicans and 47 Democrats. Marvel Studios' latest movie broke nearly every box office record imaginable. 
Avengers Endgame hit theaters this past weekend, bringing in $1.2 billion worldwide. It is the only film in history to cross the $1 billion mark for its debut, and it only took five days. According to the box office, the film broke the previous record held by its prequel, Avengers Infinity War. Its global domination was propelled by China after being the highest grossing debut ever. It crushes the record for the biggest opening weekend internationally, previously held by 2017's The Fate of the Furious. Endgame also shattered the opening record in North America, bringing in an estimated $350 million, making it the biggest opening weekend ever. Children in three African countries will start to receive some health benefits. According to CNN News, around 360,000 children a year will receive the world's first malaria vaccine as part of a large-scale pilot project. Countries like Mali, Ma Malawi has stated vaccinating children under the age of two, and Kenya and Ghana will begin using the vaccine in the coming weeks. According to the World Health Organization, the vaccine offers partial protection from the disease. With clinical trials, the vaccine prevented approximately 4 in 10 malaria cases. Children under 5 are at the greatest risk of malaria's life-threatening complications. More than 250,000 children die from the disease every year in Africa. The vaccine will be given in four doses, with three doses between the ages of five and nine months, and the fourth dose provided around the second birthday. According to officials, it would be particularly important to make sure that the children receive all four doses of the vaccine to maximize its efficiency. Floods and mudslides in the South African city of Durban have killed at least 60 people. According to BBC News, southern and eastern parts of the country have been badly hit by severe rain in the last week. The raging floods damaged businesses, homes, and at least two universities while hundreds of people have been displaced. More flooding and strong winds are expected in these coastal areas. BBC reported that South Africa's president has been visiting those who lost family members in the floods. Dozens of people, dozens of people have been taken to hospitals while, in, while search and rescue teams are looking for more survivors. A fire has set ablaze in the forest that inspired the famous setting for the, Winnie, for the Winnie the Pooh novels. Firefighters in England from several departments worked Sunday night to put, put out the fire in Ashdown Forest in East Sussex. British author A.A. A. Milne, Milne, who is most famous for writing the Winnie the Pooh books, lived nearby Hartfield, East Sussex with his family in 1925. Within Ashdown Forest is a landscape called the, fi the 500 Acre Wood, which is the setting for Winnie the Pooh. Milne published his first series of stories about the beloved bear about a year after moving to the edge of the forest. Fire officials do not yet know the cause of the fire and an investigation is ongoing. That's what's happening in the news world this week. Stay tuned for a sports update when we return. The scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome back for this sports update for TMN TV Sports. The FHSU baseball team finished winless in a three-game series against Central Missouri last weekend. The Mules outscored the Tigers 48-3 over the weekend. Michael Sinks of Central Missouri produced an offensive explosion for the Mules and a multiple RBI game in all three games. The Tigers struggled a bit defensively as they committed eight errors in the series overall. Following the three victories by the Mules, Central Missouri moves to a record of 32-12 and 12 on the season, including 22-8 and eight in MIAA play. The Tigers' record now sits at 4-37 overall, with a 2-28 mark in MIAA play. 
The Tigers will return to Lark's Park for three games to wrap up the regular season versus Pittsburgh State this weekend, May 3rd through May 5th. First Pitch Friday is scheduled for 7, Saturday's contest is slated for first pitch at 2, and Sunday's series finale is scheduled for a noon first pitch. The FHSU softball team split four games against the Nebraska Kearney Lopers this past weekend. The Tigers won both the home games on Saturday before falling in both games in Kearney on Sunday. With the first win on Saturday, head coach Adrian Pilkington notched win number 100 of her coaching career at FHSU. Though the Tigers swept the doubleheader on Saturday, their MIAA tournament hopes were dashed shortly following their Game 1 win. Northeastern State rallied to sweep Missouri Southern and Pittsburgh State picked up a victory over number one nationally ranked and MIAA regular season champion Central Oklahoma to keep the Tigers out of the tournament field. Unfortunately, the Tigers finished the one, ga the one game out of a four-way tie for fifth at 14 and 12. Those four teams, Emporia State, Lindenwood, Northeastern State, and Pittsburgh State grabbed the final four spots in the MIAA tournament with three having to clinch their spot on Saturday. To end the season on Sunday, the Tigers fell short in both games by scores of 2-1 and 12-4. The 24 wins this season was the most for the Tigers since 2015 when the Tigers won 26. The FHSU men's track and field team claimed four events at the Cloud County Invitational last week. Each of the Tigers' first place finishes came in the field events. Ryan Stanley and Mark Faber tied for a first place finish in the pole vault. Other Tigers' first place finishes were earned by Gilbert Peters in the shot put, Jacob Gagon in the discus, and Hunter da Dagermore in the hammer throw. Other top finishes by the men's team included a third place in the 100 meters by Adrian Soto, as well as a second place in the high jump by Colt Newell. Meanwhile, the women's team earned mainly high place finishes and won six events. The six first place finishes include Lindsay Shoup in the 400 meters, Abigail Stewart in the 500 meters, Summer Craigle in the high jump, Kayla Smith in the triple jump, Logan Batchman in the shot put, and Julia Wagner in the hammer throw. Fort Hayes State's Lauren Lindell was honored by earning the achievement of sharing the Sportsmanship Award of the Year for the MIAA. Lindell shares the honor with two other women from Nebraska Kearney and Northwest Missouri State. She is the second Tiger in two years to earn this honor. On the season, Lindell posted a 3-10 overall record in singles play and a 4-9 doubles mark. The FHSU men and women's golf teams have both wrapped up at the MIAA championships. Both teams claimed 8th place finishes at the competition last week. For the women's team, senior Taylor DeVore earned a tie for 23rd place individually. She shot a round of 82 before finishing with identical rounds of 78. Also, Hannah Perkins captured a solo 35th place finish overall, and Katie Brungar earned a solo 40th place finish. Northeastern State would take home the team championship. For the men's team, senior Mac McNish claimed an 18th place solo finish with rounds of 74, 73, and 74 over the weekend. Connor Schultz and Bryce Cohen each tied for a 34th place finish. Meanwhile, Isaiah Grover tied for a 40, 43rd place solo finish. Lennon Wood wound up taking home the team championship. The Kansas City Royals went 1-2 and two in their weekend series against the Los Angeles. In the Royals' lone win of the weekend, Keel Veen Gutierrez went 1-3 for three in his major league debut with two RBIs and a walk. Adal Berto, Mondesi, George Soler, Ryan O'Hearn all had multi-hit games. Hunter D Dozier also racked up four hits. To close out the series on Sunday, the Angels won by a score of 7-3. Los Angeles scored four runs in the first three innings, and the Royals were unable to ever recover from the de deficit. The Royals will begin this week with a four-game series at, at home against the Tampa Bay Rays. The 2019 NFL Draft took place this weekend. Two players from Kansas State University were selected. Dalton Nurser was selected by the Denver Broncos in the second round with pick number 41 overall. 
Reisner becomes the highest drafted offensive lineman in Kansas State history. The other player from KSU to be drafted was Duke Shelley. Shelley, a defensive back, was selected by the Chicago Bears with pick number 205 in the sixth round. Kansas State running back Alex Barnes signed an undrafted free agent contract with the Tennessee Titans. There were also four players from Kansas, Kansas University to sign undrafted free agent contracts. Fort Hayes State University defensive back Doyen Jabowu went undrafted but did sign as an undrafted free agent with the Chicago Bears. As for the Kansas City Chiefs, they made six draft selections. The players they selected on day two of the draft were wide receiver Mecole Hardman, defensive back Juan Thornhill, and defensive lineman Colin Sanders. On day three, the Chiefs' selections were defensive back Rashod uh, Fenton, running back Darwin Thompson, and offensive lineman Nick Allegretti. The 145th Kentucky Derby will take place this Saturday, May 4th, from Louisville, Kentucky. This year's field, field is open to tw 20 horses. Also, the, pers the pursuit for 2019 has increased from $2 million to $3 million. The race will be broadcast by NBC with coverage by NBCSN of undercard races beginning at 11.30 a.m. and main network coverage of pre-race activities starting at 1.30 p.m. About a month ago, news surfaced of Chiefs wide receiver Tyreek Hill and his fiance Crystal Espinal were being investigated for their son's health. The three-year-old kid had reportedly suffered a broken arm, according to Tribune News Service and the Kansas City Star. This last Wednesday, Johnson County District Attorney Steve Ho announced in a press conference that after an inv investigation, neither Hill nor his fiance would be charged of any crimes. However, he did believe a crime had occurred. The next day, KCTV5 released footage of an audio tape that has the two parents discussing how the accident occurred. A key part of that tape is Espinal telling Hill, you, may, you make him open up his arms and you punch him in the chest. With his brand new information from the audio tape, the Chiefs have suspended Hill from, from team activities for the foreseeable future and may likely release him this week. Hill already had a past history with domestic violence when he punched his fiance in the stomach and choked her. He is now facing discipline for his behavior with his child and his NFL career may now be over. Tune in next week for another episode of TMN TV. To stay up to date with the latest news and information throughout the week, visit TigerMediaNet.com. Until then, remember, roar tigers!